first on the beach. And while Britain faces cutbacks and eye-watering debt, just look how well the Germans are doing. We need, frankly, to have a more Germanic approach. Employment is at record levels, and it's a world-beating exporter. What's more, the Germans earn more than us and work fewer hours. So how do they do it? I'm Justin Rolat, a journalist. You speak English. And I'm B. Rolat, a writer. And we're on a mission to discover the secret of German success. It's like kid heaven. We're taking the kids with us and we're going in. Yes, there'll be beer and sausages, but this is no holiday. We're going to work. Just one text. Ah, uh, no, sorry. No, no, you're, you're, here, you're here to work. Live. It's too loud. Well, we are too loud. You are too loud. And play. Good army! Good army! Just like average, ordinary Germans. Because our challenge is to become German. on roses and whiskers on You want soup? You've got, hold on, you've got lovely food. I live in North London with my wife, Bea, and our four children. We are in a week, in fact. They have socks in Germany, do they? They probably have, you know, better socks than we've got. There's quite a kind of tradition of, you know, two world wars, one World Cup, you know, that kind of attitude to Germany and Britain. And I think it'd be quite interesting to see what the Germans think of us, you know. I mean, we've obviously suffered terrible industrial decline since the Second World War. The Germans have done, you know, pretty well. They're still a major industrial nation. And it'd be quite interesting to see what they think of Britain. Put those. OK. Can you put them in there for me? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, thank you. I'm actually half German, but uh, I never grew up there. I grew up in this country. Um, my dad's German, but my parents separated when I was little. I don't want to be disloyal. You know, there's, there's nothing wrong with being half German, so it's not a problem. But maybe there is a kind of, there are a few kind of sort of Teutonic qualities that she has. I can't believe I'm showing this, but I quite like sitting on the toilet with the door open and I'll just, you know, have a merry exchange with anyone who passes by. And Justin thinks that's really German. I just think that's the way I grew up. Oh, yes, you. What's also really German is small families. The German birth rate is low and falling, just 1.4 children per couple. So the first step in making us German is to leave our eldest two, Eva and Zola, at home with Granny. I'm going to miss them, but it's quite nice to have a break sometimes from all the loudness and everything. I think it's going to be brilliant and I'm not going to miss them at all. First off, we need somewhere to live. We've moved to Nuremberg in the heart of Bavaria. It's famous for its gingerbread, its sausages, and its Nazi history. Hello. Hello, are you Mrs. Holler? Yes, yes. We've rented a flat from Mrs. Holler. Okay. We Brits may be obsessed with buying property, but Germans aren't. More than half of them rent compared to just a third of us. And I can see it means the Germans don't saddle themselves with huge debts. In Britain, the average family owes £53,000, including mortgages. In Germany, it's just under £30,000. The kids are making themselves at home, and I'm expecting our first German visitor. Hi, yeah. Hey, hi, I'm PJ. But PJ. PJ is an advertising guru. His ad agency specializes in knowing exactly what the average German does every minute of every day. We did quite a lot of research on how the typical German lives. Actually. Yeah. I, I, I brought you some things to learn about typical German in this area. Und damit auch die Durchschnittsdeutschen. And according to the film, the typical German is called Müller, the nation's most common surname, and lives in a 1970s apartment block. Müller. Like this. A flat just like ours. Sabina is the most common female name, so that's me. And here's me. Thomas Müller is the most common male name. The Müllers only have one child, unlike us. 
hat die deutsche Durchschnittsfamilie also eher einen Sohn. Germans certainly get up early, 20 minutes earlier than the average Brit. Auf den Boden knallt. Let's talk about tomorrow morning. Okay, are you prepared to go a bit earlier than, than usual? I don't know. Um, 6.23. 6.23. That is uh, early. That's when you have to get up. And then the good thing is you can take a bit of time in the bathroom. The video goes into extraordinary detail. No surprise that I pee standing up, but then I sit down and read the sports section of the paper. German men sit on the loo for twice as long as German women. And when it comes to loo paper, the Germans are folders, not crumplers. In fact, I get 24.6 minutes in the bathroom. I get to sleep a bit longer and spend 28.1 minutes in the bathroom. With two little children being, being in, the, in the family and not in school, the typical German wife would not go to work, actually. Really? Yeah. Spend time at home with the kids, doing, uh, you know, housework. Also to teach the kids um, proper table manners. That That's is, important that to Germans, is, is, that is it? That is valued highly, actually, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a okay. certain, certain amount of good behavior and how you do things in a certain structure and order. Still, it's very important. PJ gives us a German rule book which he wants us to follow. A checklist telling us everything from the amount of housework to our daily pork intake. I just don't believe that most women want to do four hours and 11 minutes of cooking, washing and cleaning. But I'm, I'll give it a go. I'll definitely try it. I'm going to do my best. It doesn't you know. look fair, though, does it? It doesn't. You get to sleep and then you get to go out and eat loads of potato, pork, white cheese. Listen, you get the same I get potato. brown bread, you get white bread. But you get the same amount of pork. Same amount of potatoes and okay, the same amount of right, beans made right, I mean, that's very... Right. But your life looks normal. To me, that just doesn't look like a normal life. But that could be that, you know, I'm not typical. I don't yeah, know. Half an hour in Maybe the bathroom is a long it. time, isn't it? We've rented an average German car. A VW Golf is right there, bang in the middle of what the Germans would drive. It's kind of rock solid. It's not flash, but it's kind of well made. And of course, they buy Germany, which is quite interesting, isn't it? Germany has one of the most successful car industries in the world. And here, success certainly starts at home. Two thirds of all the cars on the road are German. Well, do you want to choose an egg? Look! Which one was yours? Is this one yours, Elsa? Time to discover a bit more about Nuremberg's history. Is it right? The Imperial Castle. It was one of medieval Germany's most important centers, but most of the old city was destroyed by Allied bombing during the war. Since then, the city has been rebuilt and many of the ruined buildings restored. Really sharp roofs, haven't they? The city was a center of the Nazi regime. The Nazi mayor called it Germany's most German city, and it is here that Hitler held his infamous Nuremberg rallies. Hello. Hello. We meet historian Hans Christian Teubrich. We are on the uh, former Nazi party rally grounds, um, a huge area covering some 11 square kilometers. It was created in 1933 when uh, Hitler uh, designed Nuremberg uh, as the city of the party rallies. So the, the, the high ups, the leaders of the Nazi yeah. party would be here, yeah. looking out on this kind of it's vast right. parade uh, ground, isn't it? So I'm standing where Adolf Hitler stood. Yes. I wonder, looking at this, because obviously it's partly a lorry park, isn't it? And yes. I wonder whether that doesn't reflect a kind of ambivalence about what you do with a historical site like this. This is not a memorial site. Now, the, the whole grounds in the last decades have always been um, uh, used in, for most profane, profane purposes. For example, uh, parking lorries here, uh, race cars are touring around here. They have festivals. Bob Dylan had been playing here and the Rolling Stones. In Britain, we still seem to be obsessed by our victory in the Second World War. It's so interesting to see here at the rally ground how Germany is still wrestling with the ghosts of its past. 
You can't help but feel that losing the war meant Germany had to pull together as a nation to rebuild. It couldn't be complacent. And while Britain's economy has faltered, Germany's has thrived. The wild things, William. Like the Moolahs, after our daily limit of 0.27 litres of beer, we're tucked up in bed at exactly 11.15 for a bit of average German sleep. I'm working to German timetables now. I reckon that was seven minutes, eight minutes maybe. Nothing more than that. I don't know what they're doing there. What are they doing for 20 minutes? We're going to get some pork products going. I've got to eat 1.1 kilos of pork a week. Nuremberg is an important manufacturing center. The Siemens, the electrical company, Adidas and Puma churning out trainers. I'm going to be a trainee supervisor at Faber-Castell, the world's oldest pencil manufacturer. It produces a sixth of the world's pencils. Small and medium-sized businesses like Faber-Castell are the backbone of the German economy, employing almost two-thirds of the German workforce. They're known as the Mittelstand and are mostly family-owned. The average German starts work at 7.49. Already, I'm below average. Hello, Justin. Hi. Hi. Fine, and you? Yeah, very good. I'm you are late. I know. A bisschen spät. A bisschen oh, spät. A bisschen spät. I'm very sorry. Um, I had to catch public transport and I got kind of um, a bit lost. I'm doing an eight hour day and that includes an hour for lunch. That's almost an hour less than we Brits work. How come they work less than us yet are more productive? Good morning. Danny? 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 No, 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 I'm no German. Not German? No German. Okay, where do we, where do I start? The job for you is to check if those pencils might, is, might stick together. Are they okay? As long as you try. This one back and green button. Okay, now your job is just to keep an eye on the pencils and the machine. I work in the lacquering department. My job is to watch over the machines in case something goes wrong. You've got to stay focused. Weil bei dem musst du halt, weißt, weil, weil sonst leben die dann, ne? Und dann Oh, they falling off. Aber das passt jetzt schon, passt schon. It's making 336 pencils a minute. I mean already I've made <laughs> I've made 1,500 pencils. It's all going quite smoothly, although it seems I'm not paying enough attention. It doesn't work? Yeah. I see it. Yeah? yeah you know? And normally, 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 um, you go around the machine. Yeah. The machine. Okay. He said, no, 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 you don't rest. You know, you're here to work and you should be sweeping the floor. You know, he said, if I see you doing that, I'll just give you another machine. And then you'll be really busy. He's doing well, but he's a bit slow. So I think he will run into troubles. There's a lot to do. And right now, he isn't doing that much. Look outside, it's snowing. Unlike Justin, I've had a bit of a lie-in. Some hot milk? The average German mother with children under three is a stay-at-home mum. My task is to become more like Mrs. Muller, the average housewife. She does precisely four hours and 11 minutes of housework a day. This is very different to my London life. And to be honest, four hours of housework is a lot. Should I be sort of hoovering the ceiling or something? To teach me some of the tricks of becoming a German housewife, I've got someone from the Hausfraubund coming round, the German version of the Women's Institute. Um, oh God, is that her? 
Oh yeah, to be honest, I'm, I'm a little bit on the defensive. I'm expecting to be judged. So anyway, too late to uh, do anything about all our booze. Ooh. Hello. Hello. Very nice to meet you. Nice to I'm meet B. you. This is a big bag. <laughs> yes, for all the things we need to cook oh, a right. typical German meal. The English says to the German, the krauts. The krauts, yes. The krauts. Krauts, yes. yes. That's not I, very nice, but they do I say that. I uh, thought we cook kraut. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> uh, my name is Eva Kevig, and I am a master yes. of housekeeping. Die Zeit zu managen. Yes. Time management. You correctly. Yes. Das Budget zu planen. Das money. So first you plan your time. Yes. Then you plan your budget and your money. Yes. Right. Planen. Wir planen, so we plan das the cooking. cooking. For, for a week or for one day? We see. <laughs> for a week. For a week. You plan your cooking yes. for a whole week ahead. Yes. Oh, I never okay. Did that. I'm learning how to make a local noodle dish efficiently, spätzle. Oh, I like this machine. Do you like to... Mm -hmm. Shall I peel it? Wie viel Zeit Sie mit dieser Tätigkeit verbringen? I'm not much of a domestic goddess, but I'm happy to learn. Shall we go to lunch? OK. Football, guys. Yeah, football. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, 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 very good. I didn't see it. And what was the score? Yeah, I'm huh? Uh-huh. Four, Four one. one. <laughs> I notice a big difference down in the canteen. All the meals are subsidized. My labor case only cost a euro. It's like a whipped pork. I'm discovering that building staff loyalty, generating a sense of common purpose, is an important part of the Mittelstand. I sit next to Timo, who's 22. I began to work at 2008 in a, a learn a job. Ah, like a, yeah, they're like an apprentice, we call it in Britain. Yeah, you started to only to learn. To learn, yes. Yeah. Uh, learn a mechanic. So is this a good place to work? Yes, yes. A very good place. It's, I love it. How long have you been doing it? Ten years. Ten years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten years. So you're quite an expert. Mm. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> when Timo and Danny were 15 years old, they went to a Berufsschule, an apprenticeship school. In Britain, the emphasis is on going to university, but manufacturing skills are highly regarded in Germany and more than half of young Germans join an apprenticeship scheme. Most young trainees will land a job in the Mittelstand, often for life. It's just relentless, isn't it? That kind of sound of industry, isn't it? The part kind of just going on and on. This emphasis on training for industry certainly seems to work. Germany is the world's third biggest exporter after China and the USA. This factory is a case in point. I'm amazed that Germany can still lead the world in a technology as simple and easy to copy as the pencil. Oh, I can just I can feel it. I can feel it in my legs. You know, standing up the whole time. Yeah, I, I really felt that people come in and work hard. There was very little chat. And, it, and what there was, when they talked to each other, it was always about work. It was always about work. It really, really focused. On my way home, I meet the current head of the family pencil dynasty. He is the Graf or Count, a direct descendant of the founder. I stick to handheld products. Whatever has to do with manufacturing computers would be suicidal because we are a medium-sized, smaller company and we should focus on the traditional products where we are really good at. So is that and the secret of, of these German businesses, that they focus on one tiny bit of 
business, but do it on a world scale. Exactly. That's typical for Mittelstand companies, that they don't stick only to the German market. They transfer their know-how into other markets, and they try to act globally. The Mittelstand philosophy seems to pay off. The Graf's business is doing well, and I... Hi, babe, how are you? ...get to go home early. Hey, Elsa. It's nice to have more family time. So listen, babe, how much housework have you done? Have you cooked me dinner? No, I'm not cooking. How much, no, seriously, you've done some vacuuming, have you? I've hoovered, yeah. Have you really? Yeah. I've hoovered, given the kids a bath, um, about half an hour. Half an hour? You've got loads. Go back to the house. Get back and start cleaning. Better get cooking. Yikes, get the oven on. I've invited the neighbours round for some German hospitality. I'm trying out a German menu. Nuremberg sausages and my granny's potato salad. Justin's nipped out with the kids. And this is the annoying thing, Justin's really good at cooking, much better than me. So normally if we were entertaining, having actual people around, especially people that we don't know, he would do all this. Hello. Hello, come in, come in. Hi, uh, our guests are our landlady, Frau Holler, and her partner, Werner, who's a decorator. Oh, thank you very much, German. Yeah, that's lovely. Hello. There's Granny, known as Oma. Hello. Hello. Hiya, I'm Justin. Jürgen, a policeman. Hi. Hiya, hiya. I'm Tanya. Hiya, Tanya. And students, Tanya and Alex. For starters, four sausages for you. Would you say that Nuremberg is a kind of typical German city? Yeah, yeah traditional yeah. city. What kind of a neighbourhood is this? It seems good, I like it. Uh, it's difficult. <laughs> Why? <laughs> and there are many different cultures here in Nuremberg. And there are many immigrants. Where where do they come from? Um, they are Turkish, I think. Turkish. Turkish, Turkish, Turkish. Mm. And why is that? Does that make it difficult living here? Uh, a little bit, but not... not it's, it's not a problem. Can I ask, what do you think of Britain? You know, is it doing well? How successful is Britain? I think it's rainy and boring. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> don't hold back, would you? Yeah. <laughs> you hear nothing about Britain. You don't, you don't hear anything about Britain? No, no not no. really. Sometimes about the Queen. Um, she was in the hospital. <laughs> that's right, that's right. But that's all we hear in, in Daddy. What about things like hard work? Do Germans work hard? Yes. Yeah. So we work the same hours as you, but we're not as successful. We work more hours. Yeah? Yeah, we, we work more hours and we produce less. <laughs> so what are we doing wrong? For example, I was in England. I was in England for an... an um, exchange. Exchange, yeah, or something mm. like that. And I was in the office, and the people are talking all the time about the private things. So gossiping. Yeah, it's oh, what have you done? What did you uh, at the weekend? Oh, what's the plan for tonight? And all the time, and drinking coffee. And in Britain, it's quite common for people to be doing Facebook in the office. It's no. not allowed. No. It's not allowed. Okay, no but if you tried, you would lose your private. No private email. No, no private email. No. Nothing. Wow. Gosh. Oh, no. Thank, Thank you. 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 Thank texting their friends, emailing their friends, you know, on making personal phone calls from work. And she clearly thought that was really bad discipline and that was, you know, well, very good to meet ordinary Germans and just hear what they have to say. At work, I'm checking out the German attitude towards texting and calls. Justin. Uh -huh. You need to care for your work, not for your cell phone. Really? You're not allowed yeah. to use your phone? No. Just one text? Ah, uh, no. Sorry. No? No, you're, you're, here, you're here to work. No, never Care for those pencils, not for the cell phone. No. Only one text. I've managed to find Elsa, who's six, a place in a Walt kindergarten just outside Nuremberg. It's a forest kindergarten, a particularly German approach to education. 
I think we're going to be about a quarter of an hour late. I hope it's going to be acceptable in a German kindergarten. <laughs> One thing German success is not based on is hot housing young children. German kids don't even have to go to school until they're six. Ours are mostly in class by four. Weiß auch schon jemand, wie das Kind heißt? Die Anna weiß. Elfa, so ähnlich. Elsa. And what time do the children arrive? From 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So they arrive at 8 o'clock. Yeah. So they have lunch here. Yeah. And it's all outside. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you know. genau. There are no primary school sats here. Children spend the day out in the forest, whatever the weather, and even go to the toilet in the woods. Toys are banned, and children create their own games and interact with nature. This is just great for Elsa. She won't want to go back to a normal, centrally heated classroom. I love it. A tree full of children. It's fantastic. It's like kid heaven. How much does it cost for a child to come to Wald Kindergarten? Um, the price um, in the month is 159 euros. Every day, coming mm -hmm. every day. That's, for a British person, that's astonishingly cheap. That's a really? fraction of what we pay for nursery, for private nursery mm -hmm. fees. That's just over £25 a week. I'm beginning to see a definite upside to life here. Good morning. Hello, I'm Justin. And I'm Laura Hugerman. And I'm Laura Hugerman. Yes. So you're going to give me a check-up? If it hurts, you tell me, please. Okay. This morning, I'm reporting to the oh, company doctor okay. for a health yeah. check. No, yeah, it's OK. I hope so. Yeah. Now I want to look at your legs. Varicosis, you don't have. No, I don't have varicosis. You don't have? No, no your no. legs are okay. My legs are good. And they are not? Yes, they are good. Could you try to do this? Oh. Yeah, okay. Is it possible that your left leg is a little bit shorter? No. No? Do you smoke? No. No. And how is it with alcohol? It's good. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Do you drink it every day yeah. or every day? Probably every day. Yeah. Most days. Not yeah. every day, but mostly. Uh, most I drink day. probably too much. Everything I did was OK. OK. Thank yes. you very much yes. indeed. Thank, Thank you, you, Doctor. I wish you the very best. Thank you. That was much more thorough than I expected. Then I'm reporting to HR to discuss right. my salary. All right. So, Justin, if you look here, um, you can see your basic salary. It's uh, around about 2,250 euros. Uh -huh. That's not bad. Transport allowance and money for working in shifts. Mm -hmm. All in all, it's 2,802 euros this year. That's gross. per month. Which just happens to be the average full-time salary in Germany. So I'm bang on the average. And how much holiday? <coughs> how much holiday will I get? 30 days. 30, 30 days. days. Six weeks holiday. Six weeks holiday. That's really week. good. I see this tax here, so we've got what? First of all, you have to pay income taxes, uh, health insurances, um, pension insurance, and unemployment insurance. And uh, last but not least here, uh, Pflegeversicherung means um, uh, nursing care insurance. That seems quite a good package to me. I pay less tax because B's not working and because we've got kids, and there's a decent pension and nursing care when I'm old. You will receive an um, additional bonus it depends on the performance of the entire production team. I wonder if this is part of that Mittelstand communal ethos, collective responsibility rewarded with a shared team bonus. William and I have been invited to a mother and toddlers group by one of the mums at nursery. I want to understand why so few mothers with young children here work. Thanks for, thanks for having us here, this is really nice. Um, can I ask, do, do any of you work at all? Not do any of you? <laughs> I think it's... Um, German mothers don't want to, to give their children um, in nurseries or kindergartens for the whole day. Right. Um, they want to, to keep them at, at home. I think it's, it's a traditional problem of German mothers. In Germany, two-thirds of mothers with children under three are stay-at-home mums, compared to a third in Britain. 
friends of mine who don't work, who are mums in, in, the, in Britain, have sometimes said that when people are, you know, that they hate the question, oh, so, you know, what do you do? Because they feel that saying, oh, I'm a mum, is, is not enough. Yes. Yeah. You family. have to organise the whole life uh, of a family, and this is, is a hard job. So you wouldn't go, oh, I'm just a mum. No, you got it all. I know, yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. yeah. It's great that motherhood is a source of pride here in Germany, but there is a stigma attached to being a working mother. They're called Rabenmutters, raven mums, that neglect their young. The German school day doesn't help working mums either. It's not possible. My daughter, um, <laughs> school starts at 8 o'clock, and um, three times in the, the week she comes back um, at a quarter past 11. Seriously, you can't work part time. And that's not nursery. That's school. That's school. There's a there's a big contrast with with Britain, that actually financially it's much better not to work as a mum here than in Britain. You get good tax breaks, and you get benefit. When I go to work, yeah. I po pay so much tax that it's nothing uh, at the end of months to, yeah, in, in my hands. There's nothing left. No, nothing left. Yeah. Really left. So as I stay at home and, and be yeah. with my kids. That kindergarten is amazing, but there's something that's still bothering me, and it's that German women, or more specifically German mothers, aren't getting back into the workforce. They work less than all of their European counterparts. And even more alarmingly, I've read that at, at boardroom, at CEO level, representation of women is 2% in Germany. I mean, in Britain, we manage, I think it's about 14%. So I find that really shocking. And I think that whatever the push-pull factors are that keep women at home, be it financial incentives or the, the strange German school day that starts early but finishes at lunchtime, Germany needs to address this so that women can, can have a fulfilling career. To keep up with Sabina Muller, I've still got three of my four hours of housework to do. Germans are well known for their recycling. Half of all municipal waste is recycled, twice as much as in the UK. Is the blue uh, a paper? Paper, yes. I've just done a bit of hoovering and uh, chucked a few things in the sink. I definitely haven't been doing my four and a half hours or 4.28 hours a, a day. Not even close. So that's a big fat fail on the house for our front. <laughs> it's tea time and I'm already on my way home. You can learn quite a lot about a culture when you get behind the wheel. You know, obviously it's a new car and I'm a little bit nervous. And other drivers are really on your case. If you make even a slight mistake, you leave your indicator on for too long, they'll start beeping their horns and telling you, you know, which, you know, you don't want to read too much into it, but I think it says a lot about the way that German society is ordered. You know, if you, if you transgress, if you make a mistake, then people will point it out to you. And that's one of the reasons why it works so well. You know, I think there's a bit of my Anglo-Saxon nature, which doesn't want to be told, you know. Because my challenge is to be more German, I've got to do what Germans do, and that means joining a club. There are over half a million of them across the country. I'm trying out one of the most traditional, a singing club. I'm not a... Hi, I'm Justin. I'm Justin. Thank you very much for letting me join you tonight. The problem is, I'm not much of a singer. Justin, do you want to sing in the, in the bus? Sorry? In the bus or in the t tenor? In the, in the uh, I think I'm probably a tenor. Tenor, tenor, tenor. tenor. <laughs> <laughs> I've come yes, to the right yes, place. Yes, good, yes, good, yes, good.
Was heißt Zungenbrecher auf oh, Englisch? Ja. Tongue twister. Tongue twister. Yeah, I got completely lost. <laughs> so how popular are clubs like this? Mm -hmm.